Hello and welcome to Gentle Touch. This podcast is a place where people can learn, discover and upscale mentally, spiritually and emotionally. This show is all about breakthroughs so get ready for some good vibes, realness and lots of information. You will be joined by me, your podcast host Alejandra Castro. Some of the shows will be just me and other shows will have guests open up new perspectives and views. My passion is to inspire and educate people who feel stuck. I will show you ways you can improve your overall health by sharing powerful tools that you can implement into your daily life. Let's get started. Hey beautiful, in today's episode we have a very special guest. We have Patricia Lohan. Some call her the Mary Poppins of prosperity, abundance and peace of mind. She is a feng shui expert, author, coach, a passionate female entrepreneur. Please welcome Patricia Lohan onto Gentle Touch. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Thank you. Patricia, I know you live in four different countries. You live in New York, Bali, Greece or even Ireland. Where are you right now? I am currently in Greece. I love it. Patricia, are you ready? I am ready. Good to go. Okay, Patricia, thank you for coming on the show. You're an author. You're a feng shui expert. You have released the book, Happy Home, Your Guide to Creating a Happy, Healthy, Wealthy Life. Yeah, that's correct. Who is this book for and what can the reader learn from you? So this book is for anybody who wants to shift their lives to the next level. So if you're stuck at a plateau, if you have financial issues and you're feeling like, what the hell? Or you're doing all the things and you're like, what is the next thing that's going to help me move into the next level of my life and really start to see things moving more into flow and joy and peace and abundance? That's who it's for. I love it. I love it. Is it an easy read? It's a very quick, easy read. Yeah, that's how I like it because there's some books that like you have to con- concentrate so hard that if you're like tired, you'll just end like you wouldn't be able to concentrate or you wouldn't be able, you struggle to take all the information in. Super easy. We've had a lot of people come back and say that it was really easy for them to um, to uh, assimilate and they enjoyed it and they were able to take action. I love it. I'm definitely going to recommend it and I'm definitely going to purchase it. Uh, Patricia, so Feng Shui is, is like you say, acupuncture for your home Mm -hmm. for the people that don't know what that even means Mm -hmm. how how could we explain it in easy peasy words yeah for sure so essentially feng shui is a 5,000 year old practice that originated when people wanted to build and consciously build houses that were um, the most supportive for them for their health and wealth so when you translate feng shui into um, English it means good health and good harvest Um, And harvest is all about the wealth and the abundance. So essentially, it's about making sure that the home that you're living in is supporting you for your health and your wealth. And we may in feng shui, what we do is we harmonize and balance your home. So it is exactly that. I love it. So I listened to one of your episodes. I'm I'm actually your biggest fan. I've listened to like nearly all of your episodes. Um, Amazing. Yeah, I know, right? So one in in one of the interviews, so I thought I would start off with this example, Mm -hmm. just in case people are very new to feng shui, they've never heard of it. And then I'll kind of dig a little bit deeper so one of the examples you gave was when you moved into your sister's apartment so you said you you uh, feng shui it for love because Mm -hmm. she had not been in a long-term relationship she had uh, you said in the interview she had been single for nine years um and then not long after you met your husband that's now your husband and things that you did to that was like you want you want to attract a taller man so the taller shelves you left empty the bedside table like you would sleep on your side he had a bedside table you even put a toothbrush in it yeah I did I did that I love it. I love it. You know what? Because I love it. Um, How did you recognize that it needed feng shui for love? Like, how do you know? So essentially, if there's, you know, um, feng shui is good for everybody like it's not like you're like "Ah, I need feng shui basically if there's something in your life that isn't going according to the flow that you would like it to be you know if you're really working really hard but you're not getting the credit or the financial abundance or you know you're not getting you know if you're single and you're do you know online and you're doing all the things and you're still not met the guy um, it could be your home that's blocking you. And that's when, if you come across me and find me, it's usually a little nudge from the universe saying, hey, there's something off with your house. We need to balance it. And what you want will start to flow. I love it. Um, so 
Uh, we say that um, our home has its own personality and uh, has its own astrology reading. What would you say, like, what do you recommend? Would you recommend, like, an old home, a new home, like, building your own home? Like, what tips or how do we know? Yeah, this is a great question. So I feng shui every home. So it doesn't matter if your home is old or new or if you build it from scratch um, or even if you paid an interior designer, like, so much money to make it look aesthetically beautiful the feng shui could still be bad now saying that every house is fixable um so it's not about whether the age of the house that's dictating the feng shui it's really more about when where it was built and the positioning of it and the year that it was built um and you know, that's when um, a client will come to me at every stage. So I've had clients that will come that they have a new site and they're building a house on it and I can help them position it and optimize it. So it's going to be good for people, good for money, locate bedrooms in the best positions, do all of that, which is really fun. Or I have clients who come to me and they're in, they're already living in their apartment and they're like, I know things are just not going the way I want since I moved into this place help me so we can readjust and balance at every stage so you know it's not like i have to start from scratch and if you do it's amazing we can give more um longer term strategic advice in terms of the layout of a house when it comes to the feng shui and sometimes there's like a misconception around feng shui around you'll have to knock walls and change things dramatically in your house and that's not what I practice or even teach. You know, I'm really, really a huge proponent to using what you've got. If you've got a roof over your head with four walls around you, we can feng shui it. I love it. I love it because not everyone, also in the example you gave in one of your interviews, you said that Donald Trump, his feng shui expert told him to, uh, what was it? Knock, knock, change the door and knock the wall down. Something crazy like that, where you had to yeah. like invest a lot of money in it. And it's like not everyone has the ability or even has the money to be able to afford, you know, to be able to do oh that. God, totally. And I would, ne I actually have never told the client ever to do that from all of my <laughs> clients. Like you never, ever are going to have to do something like that. And that's really an extreme thing. And, you know, he had the money to be able to do it. You know, it wasn't like, you know, but for me, I'm like, no, we just work with what you've got, where you're living right now. And it can be turned around and definitely improved. I love it. Um, also, so basically, how, how do you explain it? So the door, is that like the mouth? Yes, amazing. So the, the door is the, the, the mouth of your home. So it's where the chi, where the energy comes in. So you want to make sure that it's easy to get in. You want to make sure that your door opens easily, that it feels inviting and welcoming and, and just all yummy and happy, you know? I love it. So, so one of the examples you gave was that, say, for example, if it's squeaky, if it's dirty, like we should be cleaning our door. We should either, I don't know, oil it up, make sure it, it closes smoothly and also you gave the example in Ireland do you tend to use the back door um in Ireland a lot of people um tend to use the back door but we typically use um we we I would recommend using the front door because it's the it's the kind of been designed as the entrance and that front yeah front entrance so it's important I love it because you said um when mom knows I'm there like they we start using the front door even just opening the front door as a daily practice every day at least once a day yeah, totally. Patricia, so uh, feng shui works around the five elements um, yeah. and, it, and it kind of works. Correct me if, if at any given moment I go wrong or, or I go because I'm not um, I'm very new to feng shui. So we work with the five elements, fire, water, metal, wood and earth. And then I was listening to one of your episodes. You said for wood, is it for wood or for earth? Um, you could balance it with plants because they're living. Yes. Um, so plants are wood element. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I just have to say, I just love how much information that you've taken in from all of the podcasts and everything. But, but Patricia, you're you're the guest with the most notes. <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So when we work with feng shui, we're working with those five elements. And um, yeah, so it's not it's not actually a case of like randomly bringing plants in your house and it's going to balance it. And when we do people's homes, every house is totally unique. So the positioning of the plant would be very specific to every house. So that's kind of just an important thing to take note of. So yeah, we do use plants as one of the, the tools. And then and then what I liked was I love the examples you give. I think on a Friday you you answer questions and then there was like a case study of 
of like some of your clients in the states I, don't, I forgot which part but basically they had to balance I don't know if it was metal so one of the tips given was to add weights in mm. And then uh, she said, like, as soon as they added the weights and they put it in a specific location, her husband's business just skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then say, for example, the so say for, okay, so wood, that can be like plants. Say with water, like I heard you uh, talk about a bowl with coins. Is that like for artwork, decoration, or does that go into the water element? No, so that will go, uh, the bowl with the coins is really connected to the prosperity um, area. So um, what we would recommend is a bowl, like, and actually you can go anywhere in your house. It's more about um, what will represent and anchor overflowing abundance. So like a bowl with coins, overflowing just is like that sense of like there's always more money it's like there's always an overflow and an infinite flow of abundance flowing into my life I love that so so could that be just any like a fish bowl like any kind of bowl with just small little cloud like a small little you know little bowl like fruit bowl or whatever yeah yeah just a small, yeah any bowl at all I'm gonna do that would that also come would you also consider like a fountain like you know like the um, yeah so I don't recommend doing um water fountains unless you've done unless I've done your personal report because adding water in can can be really powerful and profound in a positive way but also it can be very 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 um it could cause a lot of uh, it could be detrimental as well so unless I have um like analyzed your house or people are part of my powerhouse program we create their custom report and tell them okay this is where you would put it um, and that's where there's a lot of misconception about feng shui out there you know there's different schools of feng shui and um the main school like the school that I practice is this classical flying stars and there's other schools that can be quite um more generic and you know the results will be hit and miss because it just says that every house is the same which they're not like if it will be like telling you two people they're the same you know and if you went to the acupuncturist and i've discussed this with acupuncturists and two people went gave the exact same complaints to the same to the acupuncturist would you treat them the same no you wouldn't because they're still a different date of birth a different you know shape size you know everything is everything about them. yeah let's just stick with the bowl with coins <laughs> yeah, definitely you recommend you don't so one another example I said so so pictures so so say if you're in a couple you're in a marriage you would only recommend wedding pictures yeah or pictures of you and your partner in your bedroom yeah so if you do say for example have a a nice picture of your engagement or a lovely holiday that you went on or something like that or you know a really happy day that you're out together have a picture like that in your bedroom perfect yeah I was listening to another example where like there was a picture of the couple but then they had another female like a like a portrait and she yeah. said there's there's always someone in else in a relationship like a third party yeah. and I was like totally. for, I was like forget that no one wants that exactly no way so do you recommend mirrors like mirrored furniture mirrored like like you know the furniture with the closets that come with mirrors yeah, I don't recommend those. Um, and if you do have them, don't panic. Um, you know, that's a really important thing is sometimes you hear something of feng shui and you're like, oh my God, I'm doomed. And you're like, no, there's like loads of other things that you can do. Um, but I don't recommend mirrored closets if you are getting new ones. And if you have them already, sometimes you can just actually take them out and flip them around and there's like white or wood on the other side and they that's perfect. Or alternatively, you could put a little curtain up in front of them and you know, you asked me about um, when I moved into that apartment of my sisters and she yes. was single for nine years. But when you walked into the bedroom, the first thing you saw was a full length mirror that interestingly enough, my dad had put up and, you know, he's not into feng shui, but <laughs> he subconsciously was like, you know, no, she's not ready for any relationships. She's too young. So that was kind of funny. So what I would say is, is is you know if there is a mirror facing you to cover it as best you can oh okay got it so so what the, so in your mirror in your bedroom where where do you have the mirror or do you have it outside of the bedroom how does that um, or in the bathroom you, you get in the bathroom so like mirrors are not bad feng shui there's a lot of like they have a bad rep around them but they're not bad feng shui you just want to look at what the mirror is reflecting or mirroring you know so for example the mirror in 
your bathroom is fine but if it's a mirror facing the front door you know when you open your front door you see a mirror it's going to reflect everything back out which is what was happening in my sister's bedroom as well the mirror was reflecting the energy back out so there was no energy coming into her bedroom but you could have it in your bedroom but just not have it facing you when you're in bed I love it and you also recommend not having a tv and then covering up covering it yeah up. tvs we don't typically recommend in beds in your bedroom but if you have one just put a little um you know shawl over it or scarf over it at night time so it's not reflecting there's a lot of you know energy in the tv you know you've been working all day or you've been or you're watching tv and there's some kind of crazy tv show like you know what's being yeah. going through it and yeah, all of yeah. that it's like really you do, you kind of want to sh- shut off at night time a hundred percent and also you want to go to sleep like feeling relaxed feeling peaceful as well not not like Mm. I don't know just that agonizing energy just draining energy Patricia have you feng shui'd your parents house I actually have feng shui'd my parents house and then and then any tips like like what did you say dad we're not having the mirror again like in my sister's apartment like any so actually, when I feng shui their house, um, they had just moved into a new house. So I feng shui it. And my mum was very like, yeah, 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 do your thing. And I went and just did it. And I had all of her remedies in and balanced. And she didn't really say much about it. And that was fine. And then this year, I went down to her house and I did the feng shui with her. And I was like, okay, we need to move this. And I need to change these. And it's just like subtle tweaks every year around the Chinese New Year. So, um, and a week later, she rang me and she's like, oh my God, since you put the remedies in, everybody is paying me every, there's money coming in and it's this person and that person and I got this unexpected check and this and this. And I was like, yeah, exactly. That's what we do with the feng shui. I (laughs) love it. I love it. really funny because she had never had a reaction like that before. Like she's always just like, oh, I don't know what you're doing, Patricia. Um, But just off with you. And now she was like totally on a different page. It was so funny. I, no I think it's because she you actually did it with her so when they yeah. participate and they watch you and they're observing exactly and then now she's seen it she's seen the duration how long it, it took to see the results so now she's like linked it together I think exactly. that's amazing it's oh, yeah, so amazing exactly. to like do it together Patricia tell me about your journey so at 16 you asked for a uh, f- uh, feng shui books Yes, that's right. And actually, when I got that first book about it, like, it was really weird. I didn't even know how I found out about it. It was so strange. But when I did find out about it, I was just like, hooked. I was just like, oh, my God, what is this? And um, I started like feng shui in my own bedroom. I started feng shui and like trying to feng shui my ha- parents' house. And they were like, what are you doing? Leave it alone. Um, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it's hard. And, it's hard yeah, to do your really parents. It's when you have your own place. Like, I was so young. But I made them, actually, two years later, I was still totally onto it. And I made them hire someone to come and feng shui their business. What? Believe it or not. Yeah, imagine. I was just like this. this I just had this feeling that it was just going to be really powerful. And, and that was just so funny back then doing it because it was like when the internet used to go like, beep, beep, beep. Uh-huh. You know, that yeah, the wait, internet. Wait. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> way back when, when and I found this person, and it was just so mad. But um, I remember distinctly just it you know being so driven and so focused and kind of like this is going to work I was just totally convinced um, and I never really thought about feng shui again until you know, like I I went to a very like back to, I went to university I studied business I you know had a great degree um, and then when I finished that I, I started working with my parents in their business and um, after a few years I just was like oh I've got to get out of here this is not for me um, and I still, I kind of had forgotten about feng shui, I'd kind of like lost my, you know, interest for it. Um, and I went to India and I trained as a yoga teacher in India. And while I was in India, everything just seemed to open up for me. It was just the most magical experience for me. And I started just really tapping into the universe, into spirit, into really being divinely guided and trusting that everything was working out for me. Um, And that led me to moving to Dublin, to that apartment in Dublin, my sister's place, taking that apartment. And and that's where I went, oh my God, feng shui, I remember this. And it just brought me back to that book and to setting up my apartment for love. And once I set up my apartment for love, I met Ken and Ken also had feng shui his house for love. So I was going around his place going, he's feng shui this place. And wow. he'd, been, he'd been into it in his twenties as well. So we both had this passion for it, this interest. 
Um, and then it just kind of started, was this ripple effect into, okay, well, now we're living together. I want to do feng shui. So I trained, I actually just trained so I could do our own house. And I didn't train so I could teach loads of people and thousands of people around the world, but it happened that way. Um, and it's just been just a magical journey since then, you know, just really embracing feng shui and, and um, you know, Ken and I have seen so phenomenal growth in our lives, in our relationships, in our finances, in our business. And we've just seen the same happen for our clients. Like it's just been absolutely phenomenal. Do you think it was because you feng shui just as his apartment and that you, then you met him not long after and he also feng shui. Do you like, how does that work? Do you think it was meant to be like your soulmate? Oh, we totally are. Yeah, because totally what's totally what's are. what's the likelihood of like someone you go into his apartment and then you realize he's feng shui it as well i know i know and i think that's the thing it's like that's one of the things about feng shui is that it taps you into what's meant to be like it taps you into your divine flow like it taps you into that sense of like do being on the right path and meeting the right people and i totally believe that ken has been a, a huge part of that and was part of that I love that. It still I, is. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. No, I I love that. I love that. I love what you say. I love that journey and just how like things just opened up and the way they did it so smoothly. Yeah. It wasn't like it wasn't forced because sometimes we get in a position where we're so resistant, where we're so no, but it has to go and how is it gonna be? And we're overstressing. Yeah. That sometimes we delay the process. Exactly. Because you're in resistance mode. And if you're in resistance mode, it's like this sense of like freezing and no, there's no flow. But when we are really in the sense of no resistance and allowing things to flow and taking action on what we're being guided with. And this is really what I see with my clients is that when we put the remedies in and they let the resistance go and they just trust the process and um, unexpected amazing things start to happen for them that is amazing um when you said you moved to india yeah. and you said said like things just it was so divine and, and things were opening up for you what do you think it and you said it's magical what do you think it is about india do you think it's the culture do you think is like what is it um I think that around the world, there's places for different people that will give them different experiences. And for me, you know, I, I love astrology and I love the fact that there's locations in the world that can really feed your soul. Um, and before I even went to India on a kind of my spiritual journey, I had been there a few years earlier. And when I landed there, I just felt like this crazy energy of just a sense of home wow like this sense of being home and when I got there the second time it was just like everything started to flow and I do believe there's places that are in the world for everybody and you know it's like some people will say oh it was India for me but it could be Bali it could be and it doesn't even need to be a spiritual place it could be a mountain it could be a place that you feel drawn to that you're like you got there and you're like wow I just love it here and and trusting that feeling um and that was definitely what I found in India was it was just a very great place that like, the culture is phenomenal you know I just really do think I've had past lives there where I've connected and and been you know there in in different forms and guises over the years and yeah it's amazing I love it that um that you had that experience how did you what was you was you working corporate like what was you doing before you became a, a yoga teacher did you like what was that transition so I was working as a um I was I had done my degree in business and I was doing marketing and then I ended up uh, coming back and running um my parents bar restaurant and off -license. wow and wow girl great. that's a lot of responsibilities yeah so I was 24 when I took that role on and I had 30 staff what I'd, like never run a business what? before yeah I know it was pretty nuts and it was a very steep learning curve um not one that I would recommend to anybody to be honest but um it was amazing and I did that for nearly seven years and to be honest um that was I you know I I just got burned out and you know, there's a whole thing of like if you are getting up every morning and for me I was wearing black every day I was binge drinking I was partying really hard I was very very lost I was a very lost person like very lost soul I didn't know what I was doing in my life and I really kind of thought I was going to my early grave like you know and and ironically everything kind of looked good on the outside you know I lived in a beautiful apartment Seaview apartment I had a nice little two-door BMW like I had lovely nice clothes and if I wanted a designer handbag I could get one you know it wasn't it wasn't like on the outside it looked like I had a bad life but in the inside I was falling apart 
And when that all kind of came into kind of fruition and I was like, okay, I, I need to leave. Um, I went on a retreat, a yoga retreat, and I just decided I, I need to leave. And, and that was when it was like, okay, I'm just going to go to India, do this yoga teacher training. I thought I was going to India for a month. I ended up there nearly a year. Um, and it was just like really life changing. And, and um, yeah, so it was a very different lifestyle to what I had. Oh, I, so I was on the yoga retreat and um, at the yoga retreat, I basically decided like something has got to give and I was so miserable. I was really in a dark place internally and I decided to quit um, and that's when I quit and I thought I was going to India for a month for a yoga teacher training and I ended up there for nearly a year um, and coming back and starting my yoga business and then that led to my, you know, to doing um, kind of healing work and and sound healing and then from there um i came across back reconnected with i connected with ken and then started doing feng shui because of a personal interest so it's been a magical journey i love i love how open you are about saying how 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 much of a at that point how much of a lost soul you was you was been drinking because to be honest in the world we live in that's success if you tell me i'm 24 and i'm running 30 stuff i'll just look at you i'll sit next to you and i'll be taking notes i'll be like okay so how do you do it how do you think what's your routine 30 people is crazy because yeah. everyone wants their time everyone wants their attention if they want holiday uh like it's, it's such a big team to run yeah and, and um, it was it was full on yeah. and and at 24 at 24 i'm still a baby i'm at 24 i'm just still like trying to figure out how to adult yeah and you know what i'm just turned 40 and i'm still figuring out just how to adult um but we have not as big a team now um but we also you, you i do things from a different way and a very different perspective so um you know the spiritual journey has been really powerful for that as well I love it. What advice would you give your younger self now looking back? Now that you're here, you know things worked out, you're living your dream life, like you you have beautiful homes, you have an amazing team. What advice would you give to your younger self back then? Like in in that position? I would say to be more gentle on yourself. Like just trust everything's working out and just be gentle, be kind, stop being so hard on yourself. Um, you know, this is something I'm really learning this year more so than any other time. It's just really, you know, don't give yourself such a, self such a hard time. Don't look at everybody else. Your path is your own path and trust that path and trust everything that comes up and every people and things you meet, uh, you know, it's all happening and, and just take action towards like what's being presented to you. I love that. that. I love that, Patricia. Oh my god, I think I think my I'm gonna start crying. My eyes got Aww. teary because it's 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 hard. It's hard to trust. It's hard to um, it's hard to come out and say, hey, you know what? I'm 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 leaving. I'm gonna transition because yeah. imagine you telling your because it's 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 success. Like you was yeah. in an extremely good position, and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm goodbye I'm out I'm take, and the people are going to be like what would you mean what about the job like what does that even exactly. mean exactly exactly and you know what was so fascinating was the people I thought that would cheer me on the most were not the people that I expected you know oh, no. so, so it was so fascinating to watch like I had some uh I remember that there had been a guy that I had gone on dates with and I said I'm doing this and he's just like are you crazy and like the same guy <laughs> did like loads of travel and had like kind of created his dream life and and he was like, are you crazy? You've got a great job, you've got a thing, blah, blah, blah. Everything's good going for you. Like, why are you giving it all up? And I was like, what? Like, are you serious? Like, you're one of the people that inspires me to go and travel and do <laughs> things. Like, it was so funny. So, you know, don't expect, don't expect the people that you want to cheerlead you to cheerlead you. And, you know, really, you have to trust your own gut. Like, really trust what's being presented to you is huge because, you know, we're all on different paths and, our friends and our family just want to see us safe and, you know, not making mistakes. But obviously we have to live and do that and experience and follow what feels good for us. I love it, Patricia. Honestly, that that story is, is, is you know what? I, I've realized people are very scared. People are very scared to let go. People yes. are very scared to trust. People are very scared to get out of their comfort zone. Mm, totally, totally. Patricia, so you started off with a book. Say, for example, if an individual is new to Feng Shui, where do you recommend them to start? 
Um, I recommend coming over to my website, patricialowen.com and at patricialowen.com, there's several different resources that you'll be able to get. So there's like my top 21 tips for getting your house aligned. There's my ultimate feng shui checklist. There's a whole checklist of things that you can do around your house to pimp it up. Or there's my guide for financial abundance or for feng shui in your office. So like there's tons of things that you can do um, that you can get started with depending on what you want. So if it's for business, do your office. If it's just for money, come check the money guide. Just come to patricialowen.com. To be honest, I need to congratulate you because your website is so full of information, but it is so organized in a way that's like, it, it draws you to it because I've been on websites, nothing's organized. There's so much information and I'm just completely lost. But say like the quiz, I took the quiz, it was so nice, it was so well presented, it was so easy. Yeah, thank you so much. No, 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 Hon honestly, I'm like, I'm just like, yes, Patricia, we're doing things. We're doing great things out here. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, Patricia, have you uh, feng shui your sister's apartment? Um, since back then, no, I haven't because she doesn't live there anymore. Um, and she's in France and she's just moving this week. So no. Oh, she's moving. So, so did she finish she London and is now moving to France? That's correct. Yeah. Good on her. So, yeah. so I'm guessing your parents are like, okay, it's Christmas. Everyone needs to come back home now. <laughs> yeah, well, we were home for Christmas last year and this year, so I don't know if we'll be there this. We are last, yeah. So this year, I think it'll be different for us, but um, someone will be there. Oh, that's so good, Patricia. Blocks. What kind of blocks can happen in a home? Um, what kind of blocks can happen in a home? Um, you know. I would say one of the biggest ones would be like clutter, like definitely um, your home having excess clutter can make a huge impact on your own energy and the energy of the people who are, you know, um, living in it. Did you just say um, a clutter and, and the energy of the people living in it? So well, not necessarily the energy of the people living in it, but the people who are living in the house, like the clutter can really impact that. Okay, 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 got it. Could clutter, like for clutter, so for some, so, for, so okay, how, how can I say this in words? So for some people, clutter can be clutter. And then for others, they'll be like, no, I need that. Yeah, so I like to dis differentiate clutter to be... Um, uh, let me see. Um, I like to differentiate clutter to be um, a thing that um, <laughs> it's like it's not like life. So, you know, the dishes on the table that you from, you know, are in the sink from last night or the clothes on the chair from yesterday in your bedroom. That's not clutter. That's called life. Like the kids toys on the floor. That's called life in the cupboard that you have not opened for six months with paperwork that's been stacked up that keeps getting jammed in there. That's clutter. So that's in these like little hidden places where stuff is like not being addressed. Um, that's clutter for me. And that's like stopping the chi and the flow of energy in your home um, and can just be causing a lot of like not positive energy. What would you say to the individual that says, well, I may need that or it's options and I may not want to wear this one. But and, and, and they have created this attachment to yes. things they don't need and they don't want to let go. Yeah, so for people that are feeling attached to things, I would start with the start with the things that you're not attached to. So start with like the plastic containers from the takeaway, you know, that are all jammed under the coverage. Like go to the places that are that you don't have emotional connections to first and then move to the then move to the the place where you want to um how would I describe then move to the next thing that's less um less difficult like so don't start with your don't start with your wardrobe start with your underwear and be like okay these knickers have holes in them get rid of those like these ones are really saggy get rid of those you know so go to the places where it's easy like clear out the socks clear out the um you know the paperwork of all the old bills that you don't need anymore you know do the stuff that's easy and then do the other harder stuff because it's like a building a muscle decluttering is and you'll start to feel good afterwards like you'll start to see feel balanced afterwards so then you'll be like okay this is meant to be you know it feels good I love it. Patricia, your home's in four different countries. Like, are they, is the setup different or it all depends on the location? It all depends on the personality of the home? How, how, how does it work? Yeah, so basically we have all our homes feng shui, but they're all different. Like, so they're all totally different and it really depends on the place. Like, so we're in an apartment here at the Sea View, um, but in Ireland, like we're in a big house in the countryside of the mountains. So that's obviously feng shui differently to this one here 
Oh, so it all depends, like, on the location, on, on yeah. the way, on the architecture as well. Yeah, okay. exactly. Everything is unique. I got it. I got it. What What is your favorite book? Oh, my God. My favorite book. I have so many books that I love. Um, I'm a real book nerd. Um, I just, like, from talking about that time in Ireland when I was changing everything, and I just reread it recently, it was The 4-Hour Work Week. Um, and I think it's just a really great book for giving people a wake-up call around like creating life that you love. Patricia, that book is hard. I, I, I've read up to it and then I put it down. It has so many exercises in it. I was like, this is like, this is crazy. Yeah, I know. Did you, you read it? Did you go through with every exercise? I don't think I did every exercise. Um, what I'm doing right now is just like, you know, really tackling into like outsourcing the things that I don't need to do. So obviously no one can show up for a podcast interview for me. So I have to do that. But somebody can, you know, book in, book the podcast interview or they can organize it in my calendar. So it's like figuring out the things that other people can do for me and my team or get help with certain things um, to, to be able to give me more spacious in my life. A hundred percent. I love it. I love it because um, everyone does a, a great team. It, it was so smooth. Like the whole process yeah. was so nice, oh, which is, you. yeah, which is really, really good. What do you recommend for kitchens? Do, do you recommend having a set, like say like your cutlery, like a set, like how do you say it? the plates go in one set or, or different? Because you know, some people have random plates and random cups and random mugs. Yeah, so random things are fine in the kitchen. Like, I don't mind random things as long as they're not chipped and broken. Oh, so once a mug is chipped, it should go out. Yeah, because it's depleting the energy, yeah. Okay, I love it, I love it. And you also talk about leaks and and squeaks. So any leaks or any taps, like, get them fixed completely? Um, Any leaks and any taps, yes, get them fixed uh, completely, yeah. What, what, what does it represent? Does it just represent, like, a, it, like... Um, anything that's like leaking is like money dripping away got it and we don't want that no we don't no we don't want that we don't want the money dripping away um say for someone that is new to feng shui what could be the most easiest example you could give like what feng shui is and like kind of like the benefits and how it could impact their lives and 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 honestly like the people around them because once you see a dif difference in someone anyone around you can be able to tell um what i would say is um I would say, you know, the first thing I would do to you is just say, is just like stand in your home and just imagine you're there for the first time and just have a look and it's just like, is there anything here that you don't like? <laughs> like that don't, that, that doesn't like make you feel good. You know, is there a piece of art on the wall that just is like neutral or a bit like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Or is there a, you know, is there some clutter in the cupboard that you're like, oh, I need to clear that out or, you know, so just start to see your house with new eyes, like start to actually see it with new eyes. And from that you'll, and then start to um, just move around your house. And this is a feng shui thing with 27 things. And um, we often say 27 is a really auspicious number because it connects to the number nine in feng shui. Um, and um, we say, you know, move or remove 27 things. Wow, what the what? Move, move, move. Oh, or remove. Or remove. Yeah. 27 could, things. Could, could it be as big or as small? As big or as, as small as you want. Yeah? yeah. That that's that's a like a that's a task in itself. That's it is. Wow, because it makes you think, it makes you organize, it makes you like kind of like coordinate, okay, this goes here, but this doesn't go there, the sunlight doesn't reach here, so we have to kind of but that's amazing. <laughs> Is really really good and once people do that do they see a complete difference do they see a complete difference they definitely do they'll they'll feel a difference you'll feel a difference for sure a hundred percent because of the yeah. flow of energy and yeah. oh i love that that's an amazing example yeah. with with regards to plants you recommended okay aloe vera because it's juicy and it grows upwards you recommended mm. a lucky bamboo Mm -hmm. you recommended the fern plant for the bathroom as it absorbs yeah. moisture but uh banana plants are a no-no yeah no um, and and you said it attracts ghosts that's correct yeah well to be honest in colombia we grow uh bananas because it's really warm and tropical and my family actually um as children they they tell a lot of ghost stories have you had any oh. experiences 
I haven't personally had experiences, but this is just something from uh, one of my teachers, um, a church that Annie House said he had feng shui uh, that had a banana plant. And, and that's what she said. Also also had spirit exper- spirit um, activity. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, oh, but I'm guessing it depends on the country and the location and the weather because, yeah, because does, in wet, yeah. soggy England, I don't know if, yeah, no, no, no way. Oh, that's amazing, Patricia. Patricia, any, how can we learn about you? How can we get to know you? Yeah, so you can come to my podcast um, and that's called Live Your Dreams Awake podcast um, on all of the different places or just come to patricialogan.com and that's where the podcast is. That is amazing, Patricia. Patricia, what's been your hardest case? Like, as in like, is it because maybe someone has an attachment or maybe they're very, they don't believe in feng shui or what could be the uh, the resistance to feng shui you have come across in in your clients or, or in humans or in individuals in general? Um, well, you know, there's obviously people who don't believe in it and I just don't really engage in them. I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, you're not meant to be part of my world then. Um, so that's fine. But, um, I would say the resistance, um, is sometimes people really struggle in like, you know, there's like, there's a resistance to doing something that could really help you, you know, and you don't realize it's like an un, it's like an unconscious resistance because if you do the work, it's going to change your life. And, some people are not don't like change, you know. Yeah, so yeah, actually, they don't. They they fear. They fear. Um, exactly of starting over of like starting new or being yeah. scared of the unknown, not knowing how things are gonna turn out. Exactly. A hundred percent. I love it, Patricia. What comes? So you released the book. Will you yeah. work on another one? Um. Yes, I am working on another one. Yes. That's so exciting. Yes, it is and um any courses um well i have a course called powerhouse um and that program is available um to for people to join and i also have a live event coming up in september so that'll be like a three-day virtual event where we'll be kind of doing inner ver- inner feng shui as opposed to the external feng shui wow that's gonna be a killer that's gonna be really really good for people i know i can't wait i know and when is that when is the date the end of September, the 22nd, 26th of September. 26th of September. Lovely, lovely, yeah. Patricia. Do you have any thoughts, any last words, any advice for anyone that's kind of interested or has kind of heard of it? To be honest, do you know how I found out about, about Feng Shui? It was a, la- a family friend was saying how um, her client was struggling to her client was struggling to sell an apartment for two years and she was like listen it's on the main high road it's opposite an office building which is like um you know like the like a police station or like the offices where where they work like she's like hundreds of people come in they go to work here and it's like it's like it's invisible it's been on the market two years I'm struggling and then someone said well there's there's a feng shui expert and then I gave them the, an example. There's a business in, in Pereira, my city, where I'm from in Colombia. And um, yeah. honestly, I've never been to a place, this restaurant, like for me to to buy a takeaway ice cream, I had to wait 20 minutes. There's queues, wow. yeah, there's queues and queues and queues to get into this place. And um, anything they open, it, it, it booms, like it's such yeah. a success. And they do feng shui. Yeah. Um, so do all, all the whole foods in America are feng shui. Really? Yeah. A hundred percent. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 honestly, like I've never seen like t- to go inside and you, you pe- people queue up. And I'm just like, this is crazy. People queue up. But yeah, that's how I found out about feng shui. And then so they called in the feng shui expert and then uh, he came in and, and he made some adjustments and then two days later it sold yeah and then it's i know so it's sold because um the neighbor forgot his keys and kind of like forgot the door like kind of forgot what floor he was on and he just went up he saw the apartment and he bought it wow see that's amazing yeah so it's magical it works and everyone should look into it because it it, it will help you it will change your life it will attract abundance prosperity if done correctly so be careful with with the water water fountains and (laughs) you you don't want to be doing any harm then good exactly patricia any last words 
Um, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been amazing. And just thank you for tuning into the podcast and taking in all the information I've been sharing. I'm really grateful. It's really nice to have someone that's like telling me all the stuff that you've heard. It's great. No, it's good. It's good. A hundred percent. But you have such big things going and I feel like you're energy and like you can even for a podcast you can tell someone's energy their bubbliness and just how gentle and genuine they are oh thank you so much i appreciate that thank you patricia so i know you're you're a very busy girl so i'm gonna love you and let you go now okay thank you so much have a great day same to you sweetie we'll be in contact okay bye. bye hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and found this podcast useful if you did be sure to leave a five-star review on apple Podcasts. thank you for listening and joining gentle touch i'll see you in the next episode want to get in touch feel free to send me a dm on instagram link is in the description be sure to follow and subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you're on stay tuned and keep listening much love